Welcome to our video tutorial on how to apply the midline theorem of a triangle in finding the lengths of segments involving a midline. By definition, midline or mid-segment for some books is a segment connecting the midpoints of any two sides of a triangle. Let's have a triangle MAG here and recall that midpoint is the middle point of a line segment. If you will choose MG and MA as our two sides of a triangle and locate their midpoints, the midpoint of MG is somewhere here and for MA, it is somewhere here. And let's name those points midpoint I and midpoint C. Since point I is the midpoint of MG, it follows that MI is congruent to IG because midpoint I is equidistant from point M and point G. In notation, segment MI is congruent to segment IG. Similarly, for this side MA, it follows that segment MC is congruent, is congruent to segment CA. Now, if we are going to connect midpoint I and midpoint C, we will have segment IC. And that segment is what we call midline or mid-segment. At this point, allow me to remove some details on our slide as I share with you a simple presentation that shows a basis of the midline theorem. What I want you to do is to observe what happens to midline IC as I play the animation. Ready? Okay. Okay, so what are our observations? First, if a triangle is cut along its midline or mid-segment, that triangle can be transformed into a parallelogram. Second, the midline IC is parallel to the third side of the triangle. Third, the midline IC is one half the measure of the third side of the triangle. Let me reveal the midline theorem, which states that the midline of a triangle is parallel to and is half the length of the third side. In notation, midline IC is parallel to side GA, the third side of our triangle. Another, Midline IC is one half the measure of the third side of the triangle. Observe also that there could be three midlines for every triangle. For example, here, aside from this midline, you could also have a midline here. If this one is the midpoint of GA, right? And another is here. Again, every triangle has three midlines or mid segments. Now let us apply the midline theorem. In the figure below, DE is midline of triangle ABC. DE is here. If DE is parallel to AC here, and AC has a length of 30 feet, how long is DE? So we know that DE is midline and AC is the third side, and the relationship is DE is one half of AC. Mentally, since AC is 30, we can conclude that DE is 15 feet, and that's it, how you solve it. But how does it go when you write it with complete solution? So first, you have to construct or create or build up an equation. Your equation here, according to the midline theorem, is DE is one half of AC. Or simply, DE equals AC over two. So that's how simple it is. Next is substitution. Since D is what we are looking for, we're just going to copy it. AC here becomes 30 as is stated in the problem. AC is 30. And then simplify the right side of our equation that is 15. And that's it. That's the final answer. So that's how we use the midline theorem. If the third side is given, 
and you're interested to determine the length of the midline, you're just going to get the half of AC or the third side. If AC is 50, DE is 25. If AC is 13, DE is 6.5. It could also work the other way around. Let's say the midline is given and you're interested to determine the length of the third side. DE, let's say DE is 4, AC becomes 8. If DE is 14, AC becomes 28. Just like example number 2. In the triangle below, same illustration as example 1, D is the midpoint of AB is here. And E is the midpoint is the midpoint of BC here. Find the measure of AC if DE is seven. That's it. Seven is given. The midline is given, and you are looking for the length of AC. You're just going to double DE, and that's it. Fourteen. Fourteen is our answer here. In your solution, you write first what you are looking for, which is AC, and we know that the third side AC is twice the measure of DE. So you write AC is equal to 2 times of DE or 2 DE. Substitution, AC equals 2 times 7. 2 times 7 is of course 14. Same answer. Conclusion, the length of AC is 14 units. Example 3, A and B are midpoints of X, Y, and Z, Y. X, Y, Z, Y, as shown in the figure below. If X, Z is 34, our third side, and A, B is 3X minus 1, which is actually our midline, solve for X. Did you notice that? If, it's, if this, the question is looking for the length of A, B, this question is as easy as the first example. You're just going to get the half of 34, which is 17. But now, the question is looking for the value of x. This is one of the reasons why, as much as possible, we present our solution in every problem that we solve. Here, we can use the midline theorem, which gives us AB is equal to one-half of xz, or AB equals xz over 2. Next is substitution. AB becomes 3x minus 1. And for the right side, we have 34 over 2. Next is we simplify the right side of our equation. 34 divided by 2 is 17. Next, linear equation. Add 1 on both sides of the equation. Or simply transpose negative 1 to the other side. So this becomes 3x equals 17 plus 1 which becomes 3x equals 18. Divide both sides by the numerical coefficient of x, which is 3. Cancel. x is now 6. And that's it. The value of x is 6. To check your answer, you can substitute the value of x into the expression. 3 times 6 is 18, minus 1, 17, which is 1 half of 34. Example 4, there are two questions, the value of x and the length of the base ln. The text itself does not contain any information that we can use to realize that we can use the midline theorem. However, the figure itself tells us that we can do because of these markings, which tells us that EF is a midline of this figure. Okay? So the first question is for the value of x. So same process. EF, the midline, is one half the measure of ln. And that is EF equals ln over 2. Substitution, EF is x plus 2 and ln. Now, since we cannot divide or simplify our the right side of our equation, our next option is to do cross multiplication. You'll have x plus 2 times 2 using distributive property, and then the, the denominator of this expression, which is 1, will be multiplied to x plus 10, which gives no effect. So just going to copy it. 2 times x is 2x, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So this becomes 2x plus 4. And then for the right side, this x plus 10 will be multiplied to 1. Copy. Next, this is a linear equation still. We're just going to combine 
linear terms on one side and constant terms on the other side. So this is 2x minus 1 or minus x rather. And then 4 will be transposed on the other side. That gives us 10 minus 4. Continue 2x minus x is x and 10 minus 4 is 6. So that's it. x must be 6. We can now determine the length of base ln. By equating ln to its corresponding algebraic expression x plus 10, ln equals x plus 10. And then substitute, x becomes 6. So that's 6 plus 10. And 6 plus 10 is 16. So answer, conclusion, the value of x is 6, while the length of ln is 16 units. So how do we check? We can actually determine the actual value of EF. 6 plus 2 is 8. 8 is 1 half of 16. That's it. Last example, find the length of EV of the given figure. Okay, first of all, the problem looks unique because the orientation of the figure is a little bit different as compared to the previous ones. What we need to do now is to analyze the problem and see what information or details we could use to solve the problem. So we are looking for the length of EV. Let's analyze the figure. We have the triangle CAR and based on the markings, it appears that EV is a midline. And it follows that since this is the midline, AR is the third side. And we can use EV and AR to formulate, to build up an equation following the midline theorem. But the problem is EV has no given measure. Okay? What we have is this segment and the side CA. You could see also that if you know the exact measure or actual measure of AR, you would also know the exact measure of EV by taking the half of x plus 21. Okay? Since we cannot build up an equation here because EV has no measure, we can rely on x plus 15 and negative 2x minus 6. Now, what is the relationship between EA and CA? Correct. CA is twice the measure of EA because point E is the midpoint. Okay, so you write here CA is twice the measure of EA. Next is substitution. CA is negative 2x minus 6. And we're just going to double x plus 15, parenthesis. And then distribute by using distributive property. That becomes 2x plus 30. And then this is a linear equation. Let's add 2x on both sides of the equation and negative 6 or simply transpose 2x to the other side to left side and negative 6 to the right side so that becomes negative 2x minus 2x equals 30 plus 6 and then combine like terms negative 2x minus 2x negative 4x right side of the equation is 36 divide both sides by the numerical coefficient negative 4 cancel x is a negative number negative 9 Let's continue. We can now use this one to determine the exact measure or the actual measure of AR. So AR is equal to x plus 21. And substitution, x is negative 9 plus 21. And then simplify, negative 9 plus 21 is 12. Okay? We now know the actual measure of AR. We're just going to take the one half of it to determine the value of EV. So EV is 1 half of AR. Substitute, EV is 12 divided by 2. EV is 6. So that's it. Our conclusion, the length of EV is 6 units. Now you might ask, sir, isn't it there's no negative measure for length? That's correct. But X here is not the actual measure. This is just a variable. So, but if after substitution, there appears to be a negative length, then you can conclude that this one is not an answer. Since our lengths here are all positive, we can make a conclusion that there is actually a measure. So that's it. Goodbye and thank you.